Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about controller renderings inside Sitecore. Uh, so who am I? My name is Dylan Young. I'm a manager of platforms at Aero Digital. I live in Palm Beach, Florida, and I've been working with Sitecore since 7.2. Uh, I can be reached through these uh, different channels, uh, such as my blog, LinkedIn, or directly through my email. So let's start talking about uh, controller renderings. So First off, it's important to note that when you're, you're using a controller rendering, you're basically going to be using .NET MVC pattern. Um, so uh, your controller rendering will be using a controller, um, and it will that controller defines what view is going to be used. So, um, and then typically, you're also going to have a model on that. Uh, now, if you're passing, um, if you're if your uh, controller rendering is very basic, it may be still using the rendering model uh, defined by Sitecore, or if you are doing a very advanced uh, type of functionality, such as some sort of listing component, you, you might have a very complex model that your controller is going to build out and then pass to the view. Uh, on the view side, um, using a controller rendering, you have really two options. Uh, you can use glass or you can use site core extension methods. Uh, typically, uh, it's better to use, if you're using glass in your solution or something like that, I highly recommend using glass uh, in, your view, uh, in, in your views inside a controller rendering. Um, so something to keep in mind there. Um, another important question is why use a controller rendering versus a view rendering? What is the difference? So a view rendering is a very basic um, uh, rendering or view for, for a component that you might be building. Uh, a good example of a view rendering that you might have is uh, you have an article list or an article display page. Uh, so you click on a link and you goes to a page where um, that page has an article, has some sort of body, um, and that body just pulls uh, data from the current context item, which is the page itself, the article. Um, so in that scenario, a view rendering will probably be the easiest and um, quickest option you could use. Whereas a controller rendering, uh, you could use it in that scenario as well. Um, and a lot of people do, especially if you're using some sort of ORM or you're using some sort of unit testing uh, that you have in place. But um, controller renderings are a lot are really great or even necessary um, in a scenario where you have like a listing component and it's pulling data from all articles across the site, uh, possibly using Lucene or, or some sort of uh, cycle query to do that, although that's probably not very efficient. Um, uh, and, and yeah, so, um, so, so yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it. There was something else I was going to mention, but I can't remember what it is. Um, so uh, next up, I'm going to demo um, how to how to create demo or how to create a controller rendering in Sitecore. Um, I'm going to kind of go through those steps and then uh, show on the uh, on the front end uh, what that looks like. Oh yeah, I just remember what I was going to mention. Uh, a view rendering, you can theoretically uh, do the same thing that you might do inside a controller rendering, such as you might want to pull in data from another part of the tree. You could theoretically do that in a code block inside the view, but that's really uh, not best practice in terms of Sitecore. So, all right, let's get going on the demo. Hi right, guys, now we're back into Visual Studio for the demo. Uh, so what we're gonna do is create a controller rendering inside Visual Studio. Um, so the first step to do that is we need to create a controller um, for this demo and for this example, I'm going to create a um, article listing component. Uh, typically, we would have actual articles on the site. Um, inside Sitecore, I have not defined those yet. Um, so this will be a pretty straightforward, um, pretty bare bones demo. Um, but I am also considering creating a demo series where I do a real world example of how to create a blog. And I'm going to show best uh, best practices and things like that. Um, and I'm even planning on building a way to show you guys some of the marketing side, side of development, um, which I think is vital for working with Sitecore. 
So uh, be on a watch out for that. Um, all right, so so for this, like I said, I'm going to create a Oracle controller. And, and just to give uh, some context on uh, best practices, in my opinion, um, of how to uh, name controllers or how to structure your website. So um, typically I like to define my controllers. Like let's say I'm building an article listing component that's going to show up on the home page. Now I've seen where some, some uh, architectures is where you'd have a home controller to represent your home section or your home page of your site. Um, and in that controller, you'd actually have the article listing component. But that's not very flexible. It also um, presents problems in the future. If a developer is going to work on the site, they wouldn't think to go and look on the home controller for the article listing component. Um, also, that's not very flexible. Let's say in the future, uh, the home page loses that article component. Well, now you have a controller that doesn't, that's called home controller that has an article um, action result in it, article listing action result in it, and it no longer exists on the home page. So um, I think it's more, it's a better idea to create more functional related controller names uh, and action results. Um, so for example, uh, article listing would go on the article controller or maybe the blog controller in some instances. Um, if you had um, um, events, it, you wouldn't necessarily have it on the conferences uh, controller. If you were creating conferences section, you might, you know, name it events controller and have event related con components in there. Um, so let's go ahead and start defining our article controller. So typically a good practice is to inherit from a base controller. Um, just to show you the chain of inheritance here, uh, the base controller actually inherits from the glass controller, which the glass controller inherits from Sitecore controller, and that goes all the way up until it's uh, inheriting from the, just the controller of .NET MVC. So, so that's that. Um, and now we need to define an action result that will represent this controller rendering that we're defining. So. I'm going to call this a public action result uh, control period, and I'm just going to call it uh, listings. So in this, I'm going to, um, for this example, I'm just going to return a very basic model back to the page. Um, Instead of defining a whole new model for this, I'm just going to de de uh, return a custom model back to the page. So for our context equals Sitecore context, which is the glass um, uh, Sitecore context, and then I will get current item, and I will just define iGlass base, which is the default base class for uh, glass mapper. Um, defining it from my data model and like that. So, and then to return this back to the view, which the view will have the same name inside the article, um, the views article folder, there will be a listings.chhtml, which basically follows uh, typical .NET MVC patterns. Um, so I'm gonna return a view of context. And something I like to do is just give this a better, uh, the finest type, just to make the code a little easier to read uh, for other developers, especially since context is not the most descriptive name for this. Uh, a better name might be uh, current page, for example. Um, so, and and this could theoretically be a lot of different types of pages. Um, so it actually is a good idea that we're using something like iGlass base, et cetera. Uh, so the listening component could potentially go on the home page. It could go on your contact us page. It could go on um, some sort of article or blog page, something like that. So it could, go, it could end up on a lot of different parts or sections of your site. So 
Now that that's been defined, what I'm gonna go and do is down in the views, I'm just gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call it article. There's also another way you can actually automatically generate these is if you right click on the action result up here, you can actually say add view or you can go to the view, which is useful. Um, but I'm just gonna show the manual way of doing it without using the scaffolding of .NET MVC. Um, so article, and I will call this listings.cshtml. Now it's important to note that when you are calling, uh, just returning view, it's going to automatically try to look inside views, uh, the article folder for the, the view called listings that CSHTML. Now, if you want to return a custom or a different view, um, then you can actually specify that as a parameter inside um, this, uh, this uh, class here, or this uh, reference. So, um, okay, I'll just create that. Um, this is going to return a model of eyeglass base. Now, since that is not something that's uh, def um, mapped currently, I'm going to go to the home and just define a using statement. Um, example data models eyeglass base. I usually add a little space in here just to separate the using statements. So now we have that. Um, so now you can create some HTML just to represent this controller rendering. Uh, in here, you can actually um, define uh, either an HTML sitecore field, just like uh, you would with a view rendering, or you can go a little step further and now use HTML glass editable, and then it knows based off what's your model, it knows uh, what properties to pull. So uh, that kind of disappeared real quick, but name is available for us uh, because our eyeglass base has two properties, one called template name and the other one called name. So, and that will basically spit out, um, you know, this, the, this uh, property name of the current context item. So the current context item might have the name home, so it's gonna uh, spit out home. Um, now this is, like I said, this is a kind of a rudimentary uh, demo. So uh, typically you wouldn't just be spitting out current context name from this. You would actually, if this was a true article listing component, um, you would get some sort of I enumerable back or some sort of data collection back and uh, do a for each loop on that to return um, articles in the site. Um, and and never, or another point to make is that you could potentially also be using rendering uh, parameters with this or even custom data sources uh, with a controller rendering, which I will, like I said, mention or show you in a future training session. Um, so your, your model could be a pretty complex data type um, and it could be looping through, uh, you know, articles. It could have some sort of component title, you know, some sort of read more link, and all of this data would be coming from different parts, either a data source or rendering parameters or things like that. So, all right. So that's how you define this inside uh, inside Visual Studio. So I'm gonna go ahead and just publish this real quick, um, and that will just add it to our website. Um, and then back into this site, I'm going to refresh it real quick. Um, and then, okay, so it's refreshed. So we go into the layout area, uh, inside renderings, similar to the last video on view renderings. You have this section, which we started defining last time. Um, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this renderings. Um, this is typically a structure I use on projects, but uh, any structure that you feel is appropriate makes sense. And I'll create another one called articles. And inside here, I'm going to define a new controller rendering. 
So I'm going to call this listing. Actually, I'm going to call this article, articles, and call it listings. The reason I give it that more descriptive name is that when you're setting these components in your PLID, um, you're, you, it's important to give them more descriptive names so that a content editor. So yeah. So now I'm going to go ahead and define my controller and my action. So this is the uh, fully qualified uh, name for the uh, uh, thing that we added. So it's going to be example.web.controllers.articleController. And it will be called example.web. And then the action is the controller action result that we defined. And so that was called listing. I believe it was called listing or listings. Yeah listings so this um, so that's it um, we've created that uh, let's go ahead and add that back onto our home page so we'll go in here uh, we'll go in our presentation details uh, in these training sessions I haven't really been showing you how to um, use the experience editor uh, that will also be later on sessions so uh, so the six by six is here. We'll click edit. Um, so in the right block is an HTML block. Let's set this new article controller uh, controller rendering, this listing controller rendering, to the six by six left. So I'm gonna do renderings articles article listings, and I will make this uh, grid six by six left. And there you go. And usually um, I like to order these uh, based off how where they sit in the site or in the tree of renderings. So typically the left one is first and the right is second. So that's it. And I'm going to click OK. Click OK. And I'm going to save. Publish. I'm just going to publish site since it shouldn't take long since there's not much content in this tree and now I'm just going to view the front end just to show that this should be taken care of and now you'll see that you have the 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 view rendering that I created last in the last series for the view rendering um, and now you have a new thing that says home, which is the current context item is the home page. It's pulling that name, which is the home name that it's pulling. So if we view source, you'll see that um, the call six, mid six, the first one, we had a div that was inside that uh, listing component that wrapped the um, that wrap this uh, you know x dot name for the current context name, um, and then it closes it, and then the uh, the uh, call uh, the six by six grid uh, the right side has the HTML block from our last uh, view rendering discussion from a previous session. So that's pretty much it. Uh, that's a very basic uh, overview of what controller rendering is. Uh, like I said, uh, be on the lookout for my next uh, kind of series I'm going to be doing on uh, real world uh, blog example, um, which will go into more detail about how to build some of these components, how to build more complex components, ones that use Lucene, um, and you know, go to the database and 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 uh, you know. The controller rendering that's doing a lot more than just a simple uh, model or current context model. So uh, look out for that. All right.